Hi, my name is John Clark. I'm the Category Marketing Manager for Integrated Workplace Management Systems here at IBM. Today I'm going to talk to you about using IBM Tririga to achieve your energy and environmental goals. I'm going to base the presentation today on findings of a survey that we undertook with uh, Gartner, a leading analyst firm. In this survey, we identified various different stages that organizations were going through in terms of achieving their goals. And the good news was that 92% of organizations have some sort of energy and environmental strategy. Yet, it turns out that two-thirds of those have yet to achieve their goals. Many of them are at the point of measuring their environmental impact, measuring and perhaps publicly disclosing it to voluntary or mandatory uh, disclosure bodies. Are they trying to identify which facilities or assets to target for improvements, or they are evaluating specific opportunities to reduce these impacts? Good news, however, is that one third of them prove that it's possible. That is, one third of organizations are in a group that we call achievers. This group has achieved their energy and environmental goals and really serves as a uh, blueprint for those organizations that have yet to achieve their goals the planners and the stragglers. Let's look at some of the details behind this. First of all, why target buildings? Okay? Turns out that buildings represent about 75% of the energy consumption and almost 49%, almost a half, of total energy in the United States. By 2025, buildings will be the greatest consumer of energy in the world. But the good news is that we found that organizations that have achieved their goals, 91% of them target energy and environmental reduction against their facilities. That is, they invest in facility energy efficiency, the most of any of the investments, 28% more than the peer group that have yet to achieve their goals. So what are we here from organizations that we've sat down with? Our customer advisory board, our customers, our prospects, as well as the uh, responses from the survey. Well, number one, 81% uh, of achievers collect energy information from either a subset or their entire building's portfolio. And they're doing this so they can assess the worst performing buildings within their portfolio and target them for energy use reduction. They also, achieve, they, sorry, they also pursue three key tactics when it comes to facility energy use reduction. And we'll get into those in a little bit more detail. But it turns out that operational improvements, building retrofits, and space or facility optimization represent those tactics used by a majority of achievers. And achievers focus on reduction rather than just measurement and disclosure. That is, they view uh, their energy and environmental strategy based on a set of targeted goals that they're looking to evaluate opportunities against and to drive or accelerate implementation of the key tactics. So taking a look at those in more detail, number one, in terms of the tactics used by achievers is to focus on operational improvements within their facilities to reduce energy use. The good news is these are very quick uh, to implement. Uh, examples of them would be to go out and perform uh, maintenance, replace filters uh, on, their, uh, on their equipment. And really I'd like to use an analogy here uh, similar to your, um, to your cars. If you go and, and buy a vehicle uh, first of all, the manufacturer has gone through a multi-point inspection, and then they take that, and then at the dealership, they go through another one. When, you, when the, the vehicle leaves the lot, it really represents that a vehicle operating at peak efficiency, and buildings are much the same. When you first uh, occupy a building, engineers have gone through and made sure all the set points and other characteristics of the building are established for peak energy efficiency. Now, like your vehicle, if you didn't perform any maintenance, so in your car's case, if you didn't uh, replace the fuel filters, the air filters, if you didn't put air in the tires, the fuel performance of that vehicle would degrade over time. And that's exactly the same with your buildings. So these represent opportunities to go in and do that routine maintenance to bring it back up to peak efficiency. Secondly, building retrofit projects. So this is the capital-based ones, where you allocate uh, portions of your budget and really focus on opportunities to replace or enhance the fuel efficiency of equipment, major equipment systems within the buildings. Here, this would be an example of taking, uh, let's say, two buildings, one in Chicago, one in Las Vegas. If you were to take the exact same building with the exact same use, if you were to look at the 
uh, replacing the exact same equipment, let's say, there's going to be differences in terms of the return on the investment. Number one, the, uh, the labor costs to implement that in two different geographies, perhaps based on, on labor rates or something, labor rates, uh, unionization, etc., will affect the investment cost required. And then if you look at how the actual energy is, is generated, let's say it's electricity, in certain parts of the country or in certain parts of the world, you have uh, energy that's produced with uh, coal-fired plants. That is, it has a high carbon or greenhouse gas impact. Compare that to nuclear or hydroelectric, which has a much lower one. So we can take the same building, the same piece of equipment, and put it into two different geographies and get a significantly different uh, environmental return on our investment. So when you couple those two, the key here is to identify opportunities, projects that represent the greatest return on the capital invested. And here you see a, a heavy investment uh, from uh, achievers in terms of these building retrofit projects. And thirdly, and actually quite a surprise to the researchers involved, was the use of space management. That is, if I don't need the space, from an operational perspective, then I don't need it from an environmental perspective. And one of our clients, in this particular case, had 12 suburban Chicago locations. They analyzed these locations and found that, in fact, uh, they didn't need as much space. They needed 25% less space. They consolidated it into a high-performance building in downtown Chicago. And in doing so, they generated 50% energy reduction associated with their 25% reduction in space. So you can see there how each of these different tactics generate value back to your organization. So let's talk about what we heard from customers in terms of what's required to support these. The sustainability-focused executives and professionals that we spoke to, 130 of them in number, said they first of all wanted to identify worst performing facilities and use these as a basis for targeted reductions. So what do they need? They need pre-built metrics, energy benchmarks against internal and external uh, facility types, really to streamline the identification of these resource-intensive buildings. Secondly, they were looking for integrated maintenance and capital project management so they could implement those operational and capital uh, or building retrofit projects to get the building operating at peak efficiency. And finally, they basically concluded that no space is better than green space. So through the analysis, of the use of their space against the demand for space, they were able to identify and align the supply of space to the business demands, both today and as they forecast use in the future, and target those for reduced energy consumption and environmental impact. Many of them have implemented IBM Tririga to achieve their energy and environmental reduction goals. They do so because it streamlines the capture of energy, waste, water, and carbon emissions produced through the consumption of energy, through the waste, and through the travel associated with their enterprise. It accelerates the identification of these resource-intensive facilities that they're looking to optimize from an uh, energy consumption perspective. And it identifies high return capital projects based on the re reduction opportunity uh, associated with the energy use. So once again, it doesn't necessarily indicate that Chicago or Las Vegas would be better, but this is the set of tools that allows an organization to measure the environmental as well as financial return on the investment to determine an optimized uh, capital program. And then finally, it models the, the facility space reduction or uh, facility planning scenarios to increase the facility utilization and in doing so, reduce the energy use. Now for organizations that choose to implement IBM Tririga, the US Green Building Council, the US GBC, has identified that there are significant uh, benefits associated with the improvement from an operational, from an energy, and from an environmental impact analysis. First of all, energy use reductions of 37% are achievable, water reductions of 40%, and solid waste reduction of 70%, all of which drive to a net reduction in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions measured by carbon emissions of 36% or more. If you'd like more information on IBM's energy and environmental uh, solutions, please visit us at ibm.com smarterbuildings. Thank you.